Good morning everyone. It is Monday morning, Monday the 18th of January. Uh, where did the weekend go? And we are back here again to do our daily Bible reading. This morning we're going to be reading Proverbs chapter 13. Let's read this together. A wise child accepts a parent's discipline. A mocker refuses to listen to correction. Wise, wise words will win you a good meal, but treacherous people have an appetite for violence. Those who control their tongues will have a long life. Opening your mouth can ruin everything. Lazy people want much but get little, but those who work hard will prosper. The godly hate lies, the wicked cause shame and disgrace. Godliness guards the path of the blameless, but the evil are misled by sin. Some who are poor pretend to be rich, others who are rich pretend to be poor. The rich can pay a ransom from their lives, but the poor won't even get threatened. The life of the godly is full of light and joy, but the light of the wicked will be snuffed out. Pride leads to conflict. Those who take advice are wise. Wealthy Wealth from get-rich-quick schemes quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows over time. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. People who despise advice are asking for trouble. Those who respect a command will succeed. The instruction of the wise is like a life-giving fountain. Those who accept it avoid the snares of death. A person with good sense is respected. A treacherous per person is headed for destruction. Wise people think before they act. Fools don't. They even brag about their fulliness. The unreliable messenger stumbles into trouble. But a reliable messenger brings healing. If you ignore criticism, you will end in poverty and disgrace. If you hold, accept correction, you will be honoured. It is pleasant to see dreams come true, but fools refuse to turn from evil to attain them. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. Trouble chases sinners, while blessings reward the righteous. Good people leave an inheritance to their grandchildren, but the sinner's wealth passes to the godly. A poor person's farm may produce much food, but injustice sweeps it away. Those who spur the rod of discipline hate their children. Those who love their child care enough to discipline them. The godly eat to their heart's content, but the belly of the wicked grew hungry. Amen. And that's Proverbs 13. Again, a lot of different descriptions going on there. Um, a lot of different wordings and, and the painting of pictures with words, um, using food and using wisdom, um, even the very last one, the last two verses, those who are the last verse, the godly eat to their heart's content, but the, the belly of the wicked goes hungry. You know, it's maybe we wonder about what Solon's wisdom is he all about materialistic things? Is he all about food and wealth? But then whenever you read it in association with, you know, with like a verse 20, walk with the wise and become wise, associate with fools and get into trouble. Solomon, whenever he talks about eating and food, is not talking about physical foods and physical eating quite often. It's about wisdom. And that's why, again, he puts through this proverb about correction, um, about listening to the right people, about and that, and that verse which gets misused, those who spur their own discipline hate their child, those who love their children care enough to discipline them. You know, it's about how God, you know, how, how, how we should correct each other. Um, but then are we actually wise enough to do that? Um, really what we should be looking at is the correction of God. How God guides us and shapes us and moulds us. How God directs us. So, whenever it says about spur, you know, disciplining your child, we should be reading about our relationship with God there. Should so we should be reading about how God is the Father and we are the children, and how 
he wants to guide and direct us and train us or teach us, show us, feed us, and that's spiritual food, not earthly food. Um, just a thought for this morning. How's your day going to be? What are you going to get up to today? It's Monday again. The weekend has gone. It's the start of another week. Maybe it's going to be busy for you. Uh, maybe working from home has proved busier than you ever thought it would be. Maybe you feel a little bit burnt out, a little bit frazzled at the edges. Just take some time with God today. Plan into your day that time whenever you will sit down. And even if you just sit and thought in God's presence, just say, oh, Lord, I just need you. And just allow yourself to be refreshed by him. It doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's not like you're getting your Bible out and you're having to start to study for an hour or whatever. It's just sit down quietly and just tell God how you're feeling. And just let yourself be washed over by him. Let yourself be refreshed by him. Let God just draw alongside you and put his arms around you. What better way to start the week than with God lifting us and holding us close? Let's ask him to do that now. Father, thank you for another week which you have given to us. Thank you for this morning, for the bright day coming in through the window, for the Christmas crispness of a, of a, a winter's day Lord just to, to be able to appreciate the wonder of all that you have done the wonder of your creation Lord this day if we do nothing else help us just to stop and to take some time with you just to sit quietly with you and as we said Lord just to let you refresh us and hold us close Lord thank you be with us today, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for watching. Um, see you again tomorrow morning, half nine again as usual. Take care. God bless. Bye.